to those of us here in church and to folks watching from home online, good morning. Jesus is our guiding light and our salvation. He illumines the path forward for us to follow in our journey toward him. We are all called to follow his light and his path toward our salvation as we seek to enter his kingdom. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we may worship God without distraction. Thank you for that. And a celebrant uh, for this Mass is Father Jude, and the preacher is Father Peter. the Sabbath day we come together in the Lord's name in the name of the Father the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you Amen. loving God as we come together as your assembly to partake of word and sacrament we ask you to send the gift and power of your Holy Spirit that we might recognize our sinfulness and rejoice in your divine mercy I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, who give us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we may, be, we may uh, abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, that the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing 
Dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom, but now there was distress, for there is no gloom where but to now was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze upon the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I urge you, brothers and sisters, oh, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that, that, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, (laughs) or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. 
and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went all around of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the peoples. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear in this Gospel passage about darkness. And there are times when things might be bleak and seem maybe even hopeless in our lives. And these can be times of darkness in our lives. And whenever darkness has occurred, in my experience, I always try to look for some good that would come out of a disaster, some light, a ray of light that would come out of a disaster. But I remember watching on TV the World Trade Center in New York collapsing from attack on October 11th in 2001. And it was just so horrific, I remember saying to myself, to God, O Lord, how can anything good come out of this? But then I saw people coming into the church and people were walking into churches everywhere. And I watched as they came in and kneeled down in prayer or just sat in prayer and just stayed there for quite some time. And they came to the church to be with Jesus, to look for that light. They knew Jesus was in the tabernacle. And we all felt helpless watching that from afar. And people thought, the only thing I can do is go and pray and look for a little light, the light of Jesus. And indeed, on that day, we all needed a glimpse of light to dispel that darkness of the tragedy. And in the readings today, there are two geographical areas, Zebulon and Naphtali, They had been attacked by Assyria and were under Assyrian rule. And they were living in darkness. But Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that was heard in our first reading and quoted again in the gospel passage. And Jesus went to that region of Zebulun and Naphtali in the area of Galilee and an area that Isaiah calls the Galilee of the Gentiles. And they were in that darkness of captivity, but in Jesus they saw a great light, and the darkness was dispelled. They were in a land overshadowed by death, but that light of Jesus had arisen. In going to Galilee of the Gentiles, Jesus shows us that he is the light of the world, not just to the people of Israel, but to Gentiles, and indeed now for all of us, every one of us, not any one particular group, but all. So it was there that Jesus began his ministry, and he was preaching as John the Baptist did, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is the light that brings out of the darkness of sin and into the light of grace. 
Jesus can bring that light into our lives, that light in the darkness of any area of sinfulness. And there may be an area of sinfulness that we have, or maybe some sort of bad habit or addiction that we need to be free of to be able to get closer to Jesus in our lives. That's an area of darkness. And we can cry out for help to Jesus to bring his light into that area of darkness in our lives. All we have to do is ask Jesus for the Holy Spirit to guide us in helping us think of some concrete steps that we could take to move away from that darkness of a sinful area and take those concrete steps to move forward step by step to be able to get into more and more of the light of Christ. For he called these two brothers, Simon and Andrew, and then walking along the shore, he found two more, James and John. And these were men being called to leave their family, their family business of fishing, and to begin a new vocation of discipleship that would lead to their lives to live in the light of Christ. So indeed, as we're approaching the beginning of Catholic Schools Week, I was thinking how hard that we all work at the school to bring the light of Christ to all of our students. Catholic Schools Week will begin next weekend, and we'll have a whole week of celebrations of Catholic Schools Week here at St. Dominic's. But we work diligently to bring that light of Christ to our students in many ways through our religion classes, attending weekly Mass together at the 8 a.m. Mass, and now we're starting up again what we call the Family Mass, one Saturday Vigil Mass each month with different, two different grade levels and their whole families to come and sit together in one section of the church to celebrate Mass together and then enjoy communion together and the fellowship of a dinner afterwards. All of this to bring the light of Christ to our children at St. Dominic's and to continue to build the wonderful Catholic identity we have at St. Dominic's School. We are all called to deepen our own Catholic identity by strengthening our faith in Jesus and looking to Jesus to help us to see more of that light and allow more and more brightness of the light of Christ to shine on us. Whether we're trying to dispel the darkness of a tragedy such as the attack on the World Trade Center in New York, or if we want to allow the light of Christ to shine even more brightly in our lives now, we open our hearts to this light and we do exactly what Simon and Andrew, James and John did when Jesus called them. And we follow him and live in his light. Let us now rise and profess our faith as God's people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and of his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving and merciful Father, we come to you now at this time of prayer and offering, and we ask you to be mindful of our prayers this Sabbath morning. That the church continue to reveal the merciful face of God through the light of his Son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who struggle with depression and emotional issues will look through their darkness and see the light, opening their hearts to the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Father Francis and Father, Isa Father Isaiah and the other 18 Dominicans working in our province chapter meetings in Oakland this month be guided by the Holy Spirit in their decisions for the province. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all at St. Dominic School, as we approach the beginning of Catholic Schools Week next weekend and celebrate the excellence of our academic and spiritual programs for our students, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Jose and Aida Cuenco, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful Father, hear our Sabbath prayers and grant them through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Through this water and wine, we may partake of the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to partake in our humanity. Blessed the God of all creation, with good and better wine to offer fruit of the vine and field. It'll become for us the bread of life, and the cup of eternal salvation. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be with us and receive the sacrifice we now offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to the Lord our God. <clears throat> Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for our salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your great mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost by our disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, James and John, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by his most divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us away from every evil, graciously grant peace on our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress. As you wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you set your apostles. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And now let us offer one to another the sign of the Lord's peace. Peace be with you. <coughs> We come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we recognize him in the breaking of the bread and we partake in his life, the life of God. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it as we recall your resurrection. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death brought life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and teaching, and never let us be parted from you. But through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy with all our sins forgiven and temporal punishment removed. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe into his everlasting kingdom. Amen.
Let us rise in prayer. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, may we always glory in your divine gift. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the parish announcements. As I mentioned, next week is Catholic Schools Week being launched on Sunday, the 29th. And we're going to have an open house at St. Dominic's School from 9 until 11 that morning. So I invite you all to take some time to pop in and visit, uh, especially if you are one of our many, many graduates who are here at St. Dominic's. And uh, take a look now at what the school looks like and go visit the classroom you had classes in. I have to warn you, it might look smaller. All men are in the parish are invited to a Super Saturday's Men's Conference next Saturday, January 8th, from 8.30 in the morning until 2.30 in the afternoon at St. Louis de Marillac Church in Covina. And you can register through their website, which is all small letters, catholicmen.org. And there's information in the bulletin. There's a, a card pictured there in the bulletin. And we have some cards and posters out in the vestibule. And is Mimi Honda? Mimi here? Well, I just want to mention a little bit about our school then. I really see our St. Dominic School as a place of academic excellence and a very strong Catholic identity. Catholic schools everywhere are losing their Catholic identity bit by bit by bit. And when I first came here in 2010, I was amazed at the Catholic school identity. It's very strong and the teachers worked very hard to instill that in all of our students. And when they come into mass, they have taught them a real aspect of reverence and when I walk in from across the school with a line of students, they're chattering away and the teacher stops at the door and lips are closed and they walk in, in silence. That is one of the blessings we have at this school. And we all have to work to continue that build it even more and more. If we just say, yeah, it's a great Catholic identity and don't do anything about it, it will slip away too. But we have to work on it and maintain it and make it even stronger. And our students work very hard academically and they do very well on standardized test scores way above, way above public schools. And when I was here before, we started a four-year old preschool and then the archdiocese gave permission for our schools to have a transitional kindergarten for four years old. So we moved the four-year-olds into that and we started a three-year-old preschool. And I remember parents putting their children in there and at the end of the year, they were coming to me and saying how happy they were at bringing their ch ch children here. They were looking for daycare and they said, I can't believe how much my son learned. And they stayed. It was just a year of preschool and then they would go into a public school system, but they stayed here at St. Dominic's. So I'm just really happy with the school. I love our school. I love the students. It's just a delight for me. A way for me to start the day is to go out on the sidewalk as parents are dropping their kids off and see their bright, shiny faces. Now I have to admit, some of them are still asleep, but 
Most of them have bright, shiny faces, smiling. And the way the parents send them off with a hug and a kiss uh, is just a beautiful way for me to start the day. So I encourage you to go to visit the school, meet our students who are going to welcome you, meet the teachers, meet Miss Sawyer, our principal, who's doing such a great job, and walk around and see all the displays and enjoy some refreshments next Sunday. I would like now to have Brother Xavier come up for an announcement. So, St. Dominic's is restarting a young adults group, which has been dormanted for quite a few years, I think, now. Um, so I want to, the first three events was actually last night, um, but there will be another event next Saturday at 6.30 at the Adult Ed building. There will be food first and fellowship, and then I will give a talk on love, chastity, and Angelic Warfare Confraternity. Uh, all young adults are invited. If you are not young adults, I encourage you to invite those you think might be interested in this event. And you are, if you know some young adults who are not interested, I also invite you, I encourage you to invite them to send them my way. Um, God is in pursuit of every soul. God is in pursuit of everyone. No one is beyond God's grace. So I simply encourage you, if you know someone, if you are young adults, come. If you know someone, please invite them. Thank you, and God bless you. Let us rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go proclaim the gospel of God.